Hi, it's Holly Rick here. I'm here to go over the components of an x-ray tube with you. Um, so to do that, I have created my own model for you. This is um, a wine bottle with an ice cream bucket. So I'm just going to take you on a little tour. Um, so in order to produce x-rays, it requires a source of electrons, a target material, high voltage, a vacuum, and that is what the x-ray tube is for. So we're going to start our tour um, here at the envelope. So everything except for the stator um, is confined within this, is considered to be the tube, and that includes the cathode and anode. It must be sealed tighter on the cathode and anode assemblies to maintain a high vacuum. For the x-rays exit the envelope is called the window. Um, this is a stator. It's the only part that is outside of the envelope and it uses an electromagnetic effect to turn the rotor through the envelope allowing um, electrical separation. If the stator doesn't turn, the rotor won't turn the anode and that would cause melting spots on the target because the purpose of rotating the anode is to dissipate heat. Um, and so, like I said, um, the envelope needs to maintain a high vacuum. The air is removed from this whole ice cream bucket so that the electrons flow from the cathode to the anode without meeting any gas atoms like air. Um, so this just helps increase the productivity of the tube. So now I can take this off. So we can continue our tour. Okay. So this side is the cathode side. Um, you can tell because of this minus sign, um, the cathode side is the negative side of the tube. Um, this is where the thermionic cloud is produced and the high voltage is conducted to the gap between the cathode and the anode and it focuses the electron stream as it propels towards the anode, which is over here. Um, the cathode assembly is made up of the filament, which is here, the focusing cup, which is this yellow part, um, and the filament circuit, which is up here. Um, so the filament, which is this squiggly part, if you can kind of see that, um, it's a wire made out of tungsten. And it is within the cathode assembly, um, within the yellow focusing cup. Um, tungsten is used because it has a high melting point and it is hard to vaporize. The function of the filament is to be able to provide a good resistance to the flow of the electrons so that the heat produced can cause thermionic emission. So once that happens, the electrons are released at a high voltage and are pushed to the anode, which is over here, um, target to produce photons. And as I briefly mentioned, this yellow part is the focusing cup, which holds the filament. This is made out of nickel, and its job is to narrow the thermionic cloud as it is driven towards the anode. Um, since the filament shoots out electrons, which have a negative charge, it kind of just helps them stay together. Um, and then we move over here to the anode side, which is a positive side, which is why I have a plus side, a plus sign. Um, it's primary so, um, it is a primary source of directing heat out of the tube, and then again, tungsten is the main material of choice. Um, so then this area here is the target area of the anode. This is where um, X-ray photons are made. Um, the rotating anode here, um, 
this um, increases the area, um, target area, and how um, it has a much greater um, heat loading capacity than stationary anodes. The rotor, which was inside um, of the stator and inside of the envelope, is made out of a cop a hollow copper cylinder and is attached to the anode disc by a molybdenum shaft. Um, the cylinder is affected by the stator's electromagnetic field and thus causes it to start turning, as I kind of previously mentioned before. Um, it revolves about 3,200 to 3,600 RPMs. Um, the high-speed anodes can do about 10,000 to 12,000 RPMs. Um, so inside of the rotor, we have the bearings, which are these little circles. Um, they are made out of silver-plated steel balls because they can be used as a lubricant between the cylinder and the anode shaft um, since liquids tend to create gases at high temps. Um, so that as a whole... Um, XP tube. So once you put that all together, those are all the components. Um, and if you have any questions or if you would like to display this in a museum, just let me know. Thank you.